Enums in programming languages are often introduced as a convenient or scoped way of grouping constants. However, depending on the language, they can be so much more. Hi, and welcome to Premature Abstraction. Today, we rank the enum implementations in different programming languages and compare them. Let's start with JavaScript. In JavaScript, there are no enums, even though it is a reserved keyword, but you can emulate it with regular objects like this. Of course, this approach has a number of drawbacks. For example, the values are not guaranteed to be unique, which may lead to bugs. Also, you can accidentally change the values afterward if you don't freeze the object. If you have multiple enums, no one will stop you from comparing values of different enums. There is a workaround when using symbol, but this has then other drawbacks. When using the enum, there is no enforcement that all variants are handled, which may cause bugs when the enum is extended. So overall, JavaScript lands in D tier. Next up, we have Go. It also does not have native enum support, so usually people just define constants. You can enumerate them automatically by using the IOTA keyword, and you should at least define a type alias so different enums can't be compared to each other. Now, looking at this, Go probably has the most confusing syntax when it comes to enums. There is one advantage though. Defining bit masks is rather elegant if you are used to the syntax. The compiler will again not force you to handle all enum variants. But the biggest problem is maybe that the constants are not scoped. This means you can have clashes between different enums. So overall, Go also goes into D tier. Next up is Python. The language does also not have a separate enum syntax, but the standard library provides an enum base class that can be inherited to mock some enum functionality. For example, we don't have the issue anymore that it's just plain values, so when we do direction north equals north, we get false. If we don't want that, we can make it act as a string by using string enum. The same goes for int enum. Then we also get some additional quality of life with the auto feature, which automatically assigns the variant name as value in lowercase. Of course, now values from different enums compare to true again, so we need to use a type checker to avoid that. We can add unique to the class to enforce uniqueness of the values. And on the usage site, we can use the match expression. But again, the interpreter does not check for exhaustiveness. It is also noteworthy that there are other options depending on what you want to achieve. For example, literal from the typing module or type unions. But overall, enums in Python go into C tier. In TypeScript, they actually made use of the reserved enum keyword from JavaScript. You can start with a simple enum. Here, TypeScript will enumerate them automatically, starting at zero. If you start with another number, TypeScript will continue there. You can also use strings or mixed types if you really want to do that, but then you need to specify all values. The compiler ensures that you only compare values from the same type. It also lets you assign values of the underlying type. Unfortunately, since TypeScript 5, you are restricted to the actual possible values here. However, the implementation is a bit controversial, as under the hood, the compiler creates a mapping with both directions for keys and values. But this is not the case anymore when using strings. So most people just resort to JavaScript objects again with as const. There are also string unions which are often used for the same purpose and you can simulate algebraic data types by using discriminated unions like so, more on that later. By default, there is no exhaustiveness check, but you can use a small hack with the never type to enforce that. Here, the compiler checks that this path is not possible, but since this is only opt-in, it is not used very often. There are also ESLint rules for enforcing exhaustiveness and avoiding duplicate values. Anyway, generally the whole topic is a bit of a mess in TypeScript, and so it also goes into C tier. In C++, the situation is also a bit messy. There are traditional enums, which are just integers underneath, and so they are not type safe. Also, they implicitly convert to integer. However, there is a compiler warning for that. There is also the same problem as in Go, that they are not scoped, and the names can therefore clash in different enums. All of this has been mitigated by the enum class in C++11. When using it, you even get a warning when not all variants are handled in a switch, though this warning is also opt-in, and it is still missing some features that we will see later. However, 
enum classes are a big improvement over the others, and this therefore goes into B tier. Next up is Java. Here we also have an enum class. It is actually a fully fledged object, so you can attach data and methods. It is again type safe, and when you use the switch expression that was introduced in Java 17, the compiler also checks exhaustiveness. Also in Java 17, sealed classes were added. They can be used as an alternative to enums for mimicking algebraic data types. This way you can attach data to enums, but more on that later. Sadly, older Java versions are still quite commonly used, and they go into B tier similar to C++, but if you use Java 17 or later, it's worthy of A tier. Kotlin has similar features as modern Java, but with a more rounded approach. There are again enum classes, but sealed classes may be better suited, depending on what you want to model. There is the when expression, which is checked for exhaustiveness. So in general, this is like modern Java, maybe a bit more concise, so A tier. Finally, we come to the S tier enum implementations in programming languages. Starting with Rust, the enum support is the most expressive, and it is heavily used for modeling the domain. It is a core part of the type system, and it resembles proper algebraic data types. This is very useful when modeling the domain because you can make illegal states unrepresentable. In this example, it would not make sense that a dead player still has a health value different from zero, so you can use an enum to explicitly define it that way. The Rust compiler will then ensure that both variants are always handled. You can see how well-rounded the approach is by looking into the standard library. For example, there are no null values in Rust. Instead, there is an option type which is actually implemented as an enum, being either some value or none. And there is also no exception throwing in Rust. Instead, there is a result type, which has an OK and an error variant. The compiler always forces you to handle all variants of an enum, which makes it very safe to use. So Rust goes into S tier. Last, we have a look at Swift, which is actually on a par with Rust. We have regular enums and we can also attach data if we want to. At the same time, we can also have raw values, which may be useful in some use cases. The Swift compiler also checks for exhaustiveness. Overall, Swift also goes into S tier. Enums might look simple at first glance, but as we've seen, their design can make a huge difference in how expressive and safe a language is. From the bare bones constants of Go to the algebraic data types of Rust and Swift, each approach tells you a lot about the philosophy of the language. Let me know in the comments which enum system deserves the crown, or what other programming languages are missing from this tier list. This has been Premature Abstraction. Thank you for watching.